On ASEAN Highlight this week, we have a quick update on the Thai-Cambodian border situation. And then, we take a look at the prospect of Japanese and ASEAN economic cooperation from the perspective of Thai businesses. And lastly, we wrap things up by reviewing an economic development approach supported by the ADB in this region to enhance connectivity. But first up, we have a quick update from the volcano eruption in the Philippines. On Monday, thousands of people living around Mount Belusan, located in the southern part of the Philippines' main island of Luzon, were forced to flee as the volcano spewed burning ashes in the morning. The volcano sent ash more than 8,000 feet into the atmosphere, darkening the sky as disaster officials imposed a danger zone around the crater and warned airplanes to avoid the area around the mountain. This latest eruption has sent high ash columns that covered several villages in two towns in the Sosagon province, forcing the evacuation of area near the volcano. The Philippines Army sent trucks to move around 2,000 people in the towns of Irosin and Juban to evacuation centers, while schools in the area were closed and converted into temporary shelters. Soldiers were also put on patrol around the danger zone to stop people from returning until authorities deem it safe. Meanwhile, local police force helped distribute masks to villagers near Balusan. The Philippines Institute for Volcanology and Seismology said Mount Balusan, one of the most active volcanoes in the archipelago, started to spew ash in November last year, but its activity has died down just before the end of 2010. Next up, we have an update on the Thai-Cambodian border situation as the foreign ministers of ASEAN met in Jakarta on Tuesday. The dispute between Thailand and Cambodia has entered a new phase this week from the de facto ceasefire that came after the army commanders of the two sides met last weekend through to the urgent informal ASEAN foreign ministers meeting on Tuesday in Jakarta. In the end, Thailand and Cambodia agreed to allow Indonesia, the current chair of the association, to send unarmed observers to both sides of the disputed border area. The two countries have also requested Indonesia's engagement in subsequent bilateral negotiations, a first of which would be convened in Indonesia in the near future. The recent standoff between Thailand and Cambodia began in 2008 with decision by UNESCO to list Prabhuhia Temple as a World Heritage Site. The move unleashed nationalistic outbursts in Thailand's already volatile political landscape, resulting in the politicization of the long-standing unresolved border demarcation issue that otherwise would have been dealt with by relevant technicians of both countries. The standoff also produced erratic armed skirmishes over the years between border forces of both countries. At the start of February, the tense situation escalates into armed clashes that dubbed as war by Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen. While the word war could be a slight exaggeration, the armed clashes nevertheless has a crucial implication for ASEAN since it was the first major armed confrontation between ASEAN member states since the association was founded in 1967. This crisis posted an important test to ASEAN ability to settle an armed conflict perpetuated by self-interest and sovereignty issues of its member states fueled by passionate and at times fanatical nationalism. The result of the Tuesday meeting meant that Indonesia will have to tread carefully through these nationalistic minefields as well as adhering to a degree the ASEAN principle of non-interference in the internal affairs of its member states in order to reach a peaceful and agreeable resolution that is acceptable by both Thailand and Cambodia as well as the international community. Looking at this crisis as an opportunity, perhaps it is time for the association to revise some of its dispute settlement mechanism as well as some of its shared principle for the benefit of collective interests and regional integration. If ASEAN wish to have more roles to play in future global affairs, it must also be able to prove to the world that the grouping, as well as its individual member states, can maintain certain standards of conduct that can uphold regional peace for the benefit of the people of Southeast Asia. Japanese businesses have been invested heavily in this region and in this report we take a look at the future prospect of Japanese investment in ASEAN in the light of ASEAN integration and from the perspective of Thai private sector. 
Earlier this week, a senior Thai trade official, Narong Poon Pipat, projected that the ASEAN-Japan Free Trade Agreement will be completed even before the 10 ASEAN economies form the ASEAN Economic Community, or AEC, in the year 2015. The reason for this is because 7 out of 10 ASEAN countries already have, in effect, bilateral free trade agreements with Japan, and Japan would likely push for full liberalization with all the ASEAN countries during the period leading up to the year 2015. For the Thai private sector, the process of regionalization plays an important role in attracting Japanese investment to the country. At a meeting between the representatives of the Thai private sectors and the envoys of Japan's most powerful business lobby, the Nippon K. Dain Ren, held last week in Bangkok, Thailand captains of industries point to the positive progress in trade between the Kingdom and Japan under the four-year-old Japan-Thailand Economic Partnership Agreement, or JETEPA. การที่เงินเย็นแข็งนั่นนะครับก็คงทําให้นักลงทุนชาวญี่ปุ่นเนี่ยคงมีทางเลือกน้อยมีความจําเป็นที่ต้องขยายต้องย้ายฐานการผล
We wrap things up this week by reviewing the economic corridor developmental approach that the Asian Development Bank and the governments in these regions hope that would bring more connectivity, competitiveness and build a sense of community. The Mekong River is a major source for life for many people in Southeast Asia and for almost two decades, the country situated along its waterway have been embarking on the process of economic regionalization under the Greater Mekong Sub-Region or GMS Economic Cooperation Program under the aegis of the Asian Development Bank or ADB. These countries include Myanmar, Thailand, Lao PDR, Cambodia, Vietnam and the Yunnan province of the People's Republic of China. The director of the ADB's Thailand office, Craig Stephenson, told us how the GMS began. The GMS program was established in 1992. At the time, the region was coming off a long and costly war. Uh, there were lots of barriers uh, among and between countries, and the GMS program uh, was all about knocking those barriers down and establishing uh, connections between these countries uh, once again. One of the methods utilized by these governments in establishing connections between each other and enhancing economic regionalization is known as the economic corridor approach. The economic corridor approach is an important element of the Greater Mekong Subregion Economic Cooperation Program. Um, our strategy there is known as the three C's to enhance connectivity, increase competitiveness and promote a greater sense of community. Um, under this approach, infrastructure is planned and developed taking into account the economic potential of an area. And there we work to maximize the economic benefits from infrastructure investments being made there. Investments not just in roads or bridges, but also in power and telecommunications and the software aspects of those investments. An example to this approach in building physical connectivity, economic competitiveness and creating the sense of community is the Southern Economic Corridor in which investments are made by the ADB and others to improve transportation linkages like roads and highways between Ho Chi Minh City, Phnom Penh and Bangkok, the three main economic centres in the region. Some of the key infrastructure projects that have already been done include the uh, Phnom Penh to Ho Chi Minh City Highway. Uh, it's the first cross-border transport link of its kind uh, under the GMS program and it forms a major segment of the Bangkok, Phnom Penh, Ho Chi Minh, Vung Tau Highway. It was financed by ADB in 1998. Uh, the road between Bangkok to the Thai-Cambodia border at Aranya Patet and Poi Pet is already largely done. It's four lane. Uh, the section between Poi Pet to Phnom Penh uh, was upgraded with assistance from ADB and the government of Japan. The only real missing link along this entire central sub-corridor is the bridge across the Mekong River in Niek Lung near Phnom Penh, which will be constructed soon with support from the government of Japan. Overall, the Southern Economic Corridor encompasses eight provinces in Vietnam, 18 provinces in Cambodia and six provinces in Thailand. According to the ADB, $6 billion in investment will be required to fund infrastructure projects in this area over the five-year period, mainly for the construction of roads, linking remote and landlocked areas with international markets. All the people involved in this scheme hope that the greater connectivity will help enhance the levels of economic development in this region. A symposium for the development of the Southern Economic Corridor hosted by the ADB will be held next month in Phnom Penh from the 9th to the 10th of March where government and provincial officials from Vietnam, Thailand and Cambodia as well as other relevant stakeholders will meet to discuss and review various action plans of the Southern Economic Corridor scheme. That's it for this edition of ASEAN Highlight and on behalf of the ASEAN News Desk here, I hope you all have a lovely weekend and swadi krab.